Hi, it's Shannon here from houseimprovements.com and I'm going to shoot a little video on my own today uh, just uh, showing you how to repair uh, a wall. So on my personal garage I've got some rot on the bottom where water sits and uh, it's rotted out the bottom plate and I'm going to show you how to remove that chunk of bottom plate and fix it all up. So uh, like I said it's my personal garage and I was uh, pulling off all the old siding because it's going to get resided and I discovered that I had some considerable rot down here and it's kind of understandable I guess I should have known I probably had a little bit of an issue because the garage is built <coughs> I just back out a bit the garage is built there used to be an existing pad in this area the smoother concrete that you can see uh, quite a small garage and a number of years ago, I think it must be close to 15 years ago We moved that garage out and poured a bigger pad and uh, Built a much bigger garage So anyways on this old chunk of existing pad that sits partially in you know halfway inside and halfway outside the garage It's a bit of a low spot here And I'm constantly right from the beginning always getting a bit of water in a good rain that makes its way under the door around the door and uh, it'll sit it'll pool inside in the garage against this wall in the corner and a little bit out here as well so it's it's not a huge surprise to me that I had a little bit of rot here um, but uh, I didn't realize it was maybe quite as extensive as it is so so anyways I've, I've got things opened up so you can see here you know the the OSP, OSB sheeting is, is completely gone and much of that corner plate is gone as well. Uh, and even the bottom of this trim piece here is rotted, which isn't a huge deal structurally, but uh, it's going to get changed as well. And if you look around out here, you can see there's some OSB damage there as well. Just probably mostly from the water wicking along that bottom plate and uh, you know, just sitting there and soaking up through the bottom plate into the into the OSB. So on the inside, let me turn this fan off. This is trying to dry things out a little bit. Uh, on the inside here, I've removed the drywall. You can see uh, there's quite a bit of mold on the that piece is upside down, but that'd be on the bottom edge of the two pieces of drywall that I removed. And, uh, you know, you can see how the rot is, that uh, right over in there is the corner outside that we were looking at. So you can see how the moisture is just whipped along that bottom wall. This area here, you can kind of see the staining on the floor where the water would kind of sit here for a little bit. Uh, just because this corner of the old pad is a little bit low, I guess. So anyways, uh, it looks like, you know, my plate, let's see, I'm oh, sorry. You know, it's soft there. I'm probably going to remove it back to here and see how things look. Um, I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a, because uh, this is going to be an ongoing issue, the water's always going to sit there. What I'm going to do is use a piece of uh, PVC board actually on the concrete and then the bottom plate of the wall sitting on top of that. So then there'll be no wood in contact in that, in that wet area. Um, I've got some one, one inch and some three quarter inch of that PVC. So I'll have to decide which thickness I'm going to use, but uh, basically lay it down first. So it's sitting down in the water or sitting down where it would be wet. And then, uh, I'll cut the studs all off. The studs look to be all right, other than possibly these ones back in the corner. I'll see better once, you know, once I get cutting there, but uh, they may be a little soft in the bottom. I might have to shorten them, but these ones here, I think are gonna be all right. I'll be cutting a slight little bit off of them anyways, but. Okay, so I'm gonna go round up some, uh, some things that I need, and then we'll uh, set the camera up, hopefully at a decent angle where you can see, cause I'm obviously shooting this myself and uh, we'll kind of walk you through the process. Okay, so I've got a, I think I've got all the materials I need and I did a little bit of prep work. I cut off the plywood on the outside or the OSB. Uh, I've got a few things ready. 
and I'm going to start with this corner first. Um, I'm not supporting supporting the garage in any other way. I'm going to cut this corner first, so this wall here is still going to support you know any load that's on here. And then once I have this uh, more secure with the new pieces on this corner, then I'll bother with that. So uh, I don't have, like I said, I don't have any other extra supports in there. So I'm going to, basically this is my corner piece. So there's my PVC board on the bottom. And I've got a two by four plate sitting on that. I've just uh, PL glued it or construction adhesive. A couple screws just to hold it together till the construction adhesive dries. And these are my little blocks that are gonna fit in there. So basically I've got to cut all that out to match this. Now I'm also going to cut this off and I'm going to cut it this off way up higher here so that uh, I can kind of use that to uh, basically attach all this stuff nicely together to make it a little more solid. So I'm going to try to get the camera to sit somewhere about here. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to cut the 2x6 off first. So that's up higher. You probably won't see that in this shot. But uh, basically set the depth of my blade. And I've already marked a square line on there. And then I'm just going to run this across. Okay. So. I should be able to. Again, this piece here really wasn't structural. It's it's more so uh, just to make a nice trim around the door. But we're going to use it a little bit more structurally when we put the new piece on uh, because we want to use it to hold this splice together. Okay, camera's still kind of seeing what I want it to see. So then, uh, like I said, this is the piece I want to use here. So I'm going to basically use it for my marks. And uh, I'll get this rot cut out. So this, this cut here. I'm going to use my circular saw again, just to follow that cut. So that gets rid of that one. Let's just pry that out of there. Again. see that was there wasn't anything left of that and I'm gonna cut this one off here but I can't really use my circular saw because I've got uh, around on the inside I've got the track for the overhead door so I'm going to get myself some lines here so I can be sure I stay nice and square to know if I'm keeping straight here with the reciprocating saw. Make sure I'm not cutting the wires for the door opener eye. Okay, so there's another piece of rot. Outside stud for this wall over here. Let's turn it a little bit here. And uh, in behind it, a 
I've got another piece that's uh, nailed in there as an L for some drywall backing. So those are both going to get cut out of there because they're just rotten. And I should be able to cut this mostly with this. I should have my glasses on, they're not in my hat very much good. So you can see there's there's no real weight on this actually. Get all that out of there. You can see here's the end of the plate that was rotten. I think originally what I had was these two studs that I've already cut off were actually running straight down to the concrete because they were such a small distance. Uh, hard to cut a plate that isn't just going to split when you're nailing it. Uh, in the new scenario, I'm going to actually have a short piece of plate, but it's going to run past out to the corner here too. Uh, you know, that isn't that bad. It's dry. And it's It looks kind of shitty, but it's, it's uh, not that bad. So I think I'm going to leave that piece in there. Okay. Got this. Uh, I guess I have to cut the end of that off. It shouldn't take much because it's completely rotted. Like so. And look at all this fits under there. With a little bit of snugness. Uh, that's going to be alright. So I'm basically going to slip that under there and uh, it's going to be a combination of a few things going on um, to hold it together. I'm going to put a bit of construction adhesive in here and here. Uh, that's not going to totally hold it. Um, but then in once everything's fastened and we have our other 2x6 over here, uh, which is nailed to the upper old part and to this, and I can overlap a chunk of 2x4 on the back here, I think, I think everything's going to kind of tie together and uh, uh, it's going to be pretty pretty decent so this should be yeah oh I guess actually I need to cut more plate out of there because I forgot that other plate didn't actually go in there so let's just get rid of a big chunk of that so it's right out of our way You can see that, but we've got a couple nails coming down that uh, we're basically nailing that two by four in. So I can get rid of those with this. That out of there. Get rid of some of this junk. Okay. So, like I said, I think. Right, I need to cut this off too because we've raised this up three quarters of an inch. This is our poly board that I'm using on the bottom. So yeah, I've got to cut that off. Forgot about it. That I don't have to get too fancy with. Yeah, you can tell that was a lot more solid than any of the other stuff. So like I said, I was kind of leaving the rest of that there. Okay, maybe we got everything out of the way now. Yeah, I think we're going to be alright. Okay, so I'll put a little construction adhesive on here. It's a pretty tight fit, so it's probably going to push some of it out of there. But we'll see what happens. Put that in there. Lock things together. Okay, so basically we've got that sitting where we want it, like so. The original plate was hanging off the pad. I don't know if the camera's low enough for you guys to see that. Down here, it's actually off the pad a little bit, but that's fine and that's the way it was. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a couple nails in there just to tack that because I don't have a piece of two by six, I don't think. Okay, so we'll use this. Get a couple nails down there. Okay, so we've got our got our uh, our base in there. We're up off the ground now because uh, I know I'm going to have continue to have this water issue. I haven't figured out how to exactly solve that yet. So uh, let's get the wood up off the concrete, right? Okay, so we got that. You can kind of see what we got going on here. Right there, Just smack the snake in. Right, so you might not see right down in there. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea of what's going on there. All right. So we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of this plate right over to around here and we're going to cut the studs off. Actually I think I'll cut the studs off first. So to do that I thought I'd do. This is the same thickness as the one by poly uh, material, PVC material that we're going to use. So I thought I'd use this as a guide and uh, maybe use my uh, uh, oscillating saw just because the blade is super thin on it and uh, cut these off that extra three quarters. That way when I take all that plate and everything out, the new plate and the poly board should fit right underneath there. Um, Said, if I use before I take that plate out of there, if I use this as a guide to run my saw along it. I can uh, basically get that out of there, the right height. Uh, I'm probably going to end up cutting some nails here, so I might take a couple blades. Maybe try to do most of the wood cutting here before I damage the blade up too much, uh, and then I'll go back and do the nails. And I don't know if I'm out of the picture or not, but I'm coming over boat to over here just past this stud so it's got to get shortened too. I got thinking maybe I can get my hacksaw that's nice and thin and cut those nails and be a little quicker. still sticking through the woods. It's still there. Same thing here.
And then uh, we're gonna come over here, cut that plate off, and we can pull it out of there. Off it out with that. Finish it with this. Okay, so should just pull out of there, and you can basically see the wet line where the it's kind of continually staying wet here lately. All this crud out of here. Let's push it all out there. Now. Okay. Little centipedes and millipedes and stuff running all over because they love that wet rotted zip. There's the bottom. Here's the bottom of this piece, and it's just, there's just nothing left. Okay, now, uh, this old anchor bolt is pretty, pretty much just turning in the hole, so I'm going to cut it off. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab my piece. So well, here's my here's my poly. My, I keep calling it poly. It's PVC actually. This product. So if I cut that right, yeah, it should fit right in there. And if I go cut a piece of two by four plate, hopefully it'll go in there just as easy. So it ends up the piece I have here, I thought it was longer than it was, but it's uh, a little bit short, but it's actually not going to matter. Now, we'll see if we can get all this in there. Get started. Definitely a tight enough fit. And slowly but surely it's going. So that's what we kind of wanted to do. Now, I'm not sure if those are plumb anymore. Let's get rid of that. I wish I had a little torpedo level with me, but I don't. <clears throat> so we'll 
Those gotta go. That's gotta go over. That one's real close. This one shouldn't have moved much because it's still attached to the plywood outside, so it's okay. Okay, so I'm happy there. Just gonna have a quick look outside. Yep, that'll be fine. So, a toenail, these studs to that plate. Put a couple of new anchor bolts in here. So we'll do that next. So these are a half inch wedge style anchor bolt, and the total length of them is five and a half inches. Um, so that's what I'm going to put in here. So they're going to I'm going to drill a hole, put them in, hammer them down in there, and then tighten them up. I got to drill on a bit of an angle because of the wall, uh, drywall and everything up above here, but it should be all right. So I've got the washer and the nut on there because when I hammer this in, it buggers up the end. And then we'll get the nut on that. Probably drill that a little deeper. And the next one. Deep, I'll need a wrench. Okay, another step done. So now, basically, hopefully, we've prevented this from rotting again. Um, over here, you can see, I think, yeah, you can see I have, there's an existing anchor bolt here, so I don't need to put another one in. If there wasn't one showing up here, I would have put one there just to secure the end of this wall. We've got our two in our chunk of wall here, and I'm going to go outside and fire a nail through that corner. Now to tie that that corner back there, the two plates are sitting like this, right? Butted together. They're sitting, sorry. Those two plates are sitting like this, butted together. I'm gonna tie them together with a block of wood. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna cut, I can use this, cut it down to get up the same level, and then I'll scab a piece of two by four there. It's probably really not needed here, but I definitely need something down there. So I took a bit of a guess here. Now that'll work there. So right there, I'll just use that to level things up. And that there to scab the two together. Like I said, that one probably really wasn't needed. Now, over there, well, can you see from there? I think you can see it. I'll show you after. So I'm basically going to put this in there. Make sure the width is all right. A little bit 
wide. Put a little construction adhesive on the bottom of that to help. So this is just lapping over the two pieces of plate. Okay, so I got that basically done here. We'll just have a little cl closer look at what, what was done. So you can see here the blocking that I put on top to splice between the old and the new wall. You can see down here the white PVC and the uh, new 2x4 spruce plate. And we've got all the old studs attached. You see the anchor bolts. And uh, where's a good angle? Can't really see in that corner. Come back outside here. See how everything ties into there. So when I put the plywood back on here, that'll help tie things together. This two by six on the end here will help tie it together. And we'll just take a quick look through here. Yeah, and then outside here, we'll just put this chunk of OSB that I've got leaning here. Goes on here, I can pull the wrap back down and uh, get everything ready to side. So when this is all said and done, uh, nobody but you and I will know that anything was ever done there. So it uh, should work out all right. I should have uh, probably done that right from the start, but I didn't realize there was gonna be an issue and I just kind of let it go on and on. That's just the way it goes, right? So I think I'm gonna be done as far as the video goes, I don't think you need to see me buttoning everything back up, but uh, when it is done, nobody will know the difference. So, appreciate you watching. Uh, it was just kind of something I thought I would tackle today, and I thought, what the heck, I might as well make a video of it as well, and uh, just give you a bit of an idea of what would be involved to uh, change the bottom plate like that when it's rotten. So, thanks for watching, and you can check us out on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and also Patreon if you're interested in leaving a little donation that'd be awesome but otherwise I appreciate that you tuned in and check out the rest of our channel